Welcome to the pilot episode of Booster's Comic Spotlight. Uh, today, me and Seamus are here, and we're going to be talking Hello. about Booster Gold, mostly. Uh, and if you stay tuned for a little bit, um, we have a little special news from Dan Jurgens that, or Jurgens, I don't know how it's said, uh, that you might be interested in. And uh, so go ahead and stick around for that. Um, but anyway, let's just uh, get right into it and talk about uh, Booster Gold. So, what do you got, Seamus? <clears throat> what do I got? Yeah, what do you got, boy? Well, I assume uh, for anyone who doesn't know that we would just explain a little bit about uh, who Booster Gold is. Okay. <clears throat> do you want to do that, or should I? Do... Um... Well, uh, you're kind of the uh, enthusiast, uh, <laughs> but I mean, you know, he's a he's a time traveling uh, goon. This who, is uh, true. Who stole some technology and uh, changes history? Not really. Like he's he can't just change history, but you know. That's an interesting thing, actually. He, um, and it, as far as Rip Hunter is concerned, he's not allowed to change history at all because he can. But if he does, it ruins everything. Right. Well, I mean, you know, that's your typical time traveling. Of course. Uh, that's that's the issues with time traveling. If you change things, then you have what's called the butterfly effect. Yeah, but it's it's weird because he the way that the comic is written, the two thousand eight series, the second series, he does a lot. So Seamus, we just had Seamus, or I just had Seamus read issues one through ten, I think, or one through seven. Yeah, of, it was whatever the first trade was. Yeah, so it was one through seven. I had him read that so that um, we could talk about Booster for this. And um, he, uh, in that series, the way that it's written, he does a lot of saving or creating even superheroes or doing, uh, doing actions that cause heroes to be created or villains even, uh, like the Sinestra Corps. Um, I don't know if the Flash was in the first seven issues or not. Yeah, um, no. Well, there was a part, I guess I don't really want to spoil anything, but yeah, he was in it a little bit. Okay, and then, um, also Superman. But he, he doesn't know that he did any of that, obviously. Even though he's from the future, he doesn't know that he did any of that, because he didn't do that stuff until the, like, the future of time, <laughs> which was in the past. Um, <laughs> which is interesting. <laughs> so... It, just the way that it's written is that he does he's from the future but he right, does yeah, things that cause things that happen in the past but he doesn't know that he did them and that's you know like i said he in issue three he basically convinces sinestro to make the sinestro core well yeah in 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 a way yeah um yeah i mean i guess in the original series as far i haven't read it obviously but as far as i'm from what I know, he he he's from the 25th century, right? Yep. Yeah. So he he um, acquires some technology. I don't remember. He doesn't he steal it? Uh, yeah. So let me just say this story real quick. So he was born in 2442, in Gotham, and he went all the way through school or whatever you know, and he was he uh, basically got on the Gotham. Uh, yeah, yeah football. football team, and um, he his dad who left them when he was a child was like, my boy's on a football team, so let's go and ruin his life. So <laughs> he was like, Booster, your dad's in trouble. I'm a gambler and I'm I'm in, I'm in debt and I need money, so I'm taking bets on your games and I want you to throw them for me. Because Booster was really good at football. That's actually where he got his name, Booster. Uh, that was his nickname for the football team. And he started throwing the games. He got caught, and he got kicked off, and he was, like, disgraced. He got kicked out of the school, everything. And he um, eventually – actually, I think he went to jail for a little bit of time. But after he got out of jail, he got a job at a museum, a superhero museum from, you know, oh, yeah. the 21st century. Um, and he was like, you know what? I'm going to be – one of these guys. <laughs> so he <laughs> stole a power suit, he stole a security robot, and he stole uh, a Legion power ring. 
and then he stole um, Rip Hunter's time machine, which at the time he didn't know it was Rip Hunter's, but it was. Rip Hunter actually put it there so that he could steal it and come back in time and become Booster Gold. Convenient. Yeah, but now you go ahead and finish what you were saying, now that they know that. <laughs> oh god, what was I saying? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> Obviously, this is our first time doing a podcast type thing. We wanted to give it a shot because we're losers, and we, we like talking about comics. So we do. That was um, the thing. So anyway, um, the series that I read, which is the 2008 series, I think it was 2007 actually. I don't know. I thought it was 2008, yeah. but it's not super important. But um, <laughs> anyway, it, it basically continues off from him in the original series being disgraced and like a loser because he uh he basically used his his hero with his, his technology and the stuff that he has to get famous basically mm -hmm. um and he became part of the justice league and then got kicked out or something like that um yeah well he so the, excuse me the biggest thing was that he was he was he used Skeets because Skeets uh, it was a history robot in the History Museum, obviously. So he knew exactly what was going to happen so he could do things. And there's nothing wrong with that um, because, you know, according to time, that happened already. So he was not, you know, breaking any laws or anything. Um, but what happened was he staged an act of heroism one time. He saved somebody, but it was just a, an actor that he paid. And the actor came forward and... Um, snitched on him basically and then that's when he was disgraced and everyone's like wow this guy's a scumbag blah 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 he's doing he's gonna be he's trying to be a hero for the money basically and um which is why guy gardner hates him so much but so he eventually proved himself like people like batman or specifically batman thinks that he's actually a really good guy he batman thinks that he's a great leader and all this other stuff because he was in the Justice League International, along with uh, Fire, Ice. I'm talking about the new Justice League International. I don't know so much about the old one, but the old one's not important for Booster. He was in with he was the leader of the new one with Fire, Ice. Um, who else? Guy Gardner. Uh, Batman was like in it, but not really. Batwing eventually joined it. Omac. Who else? Vixen was in it. Uh, Rocket Red. Like number six or whatever, Gavril <laughs> Ivanovich, and um, anyway, so that that obviously ended. There was a one annual and then twelve issues, and that ended because uh, a lot of stuff happened. I don't know if I want to say spoilers or not, but big explosion, people died, um, <laughs> and so uh, basically he. But before that, he was attempting to prove himself to the Justice League the, of America like Batman and all of them, and he wanted to join them. Right. And then he was told, I think it was by uh, Rip, that he's not allowed to take credit for any of the stuff he does anymore, otherwise he would cease to exist and the world would end. Well, that's what happens in the... In the yeah, that's what happens in the 2008 in, series. In, yeah. But all this stuff are, are happening at the same time, or very similar times. Like, uh, Time Master's Vanishing Point happens in the middle of the 2008 series. Um, Justice League International happens after, but just after, just after Flashpoint, which is how, when the 2008 series ended, and um, so like a lot of stuff, it, all of his series are basically coinciding, and since he's a time traveler, that makes sense. Um, right. But, so he proves himself to the Justice League of America, and he's like ignoring Rip, basically, and he's like... I'm going to do whatever I want anyway. I don't believe you. The world's not going to end. I'm not going to die, blah, blah, blah. And when they hand him the certificate to sign to say, hey, you're in the Justice League of America, he looks at it, and it switches into Hal Jordan's death certificate. It, like, phases into Hal Jordan's death certificate as he's, like, signing it. So he drops it, and he and he just says, haha, joke's on you. I just wanted to prove to you retards that a scumbag like me could join the Justice League of America. <laughs> and then he runs away, and he, like, runs to um, Rip, and he's he like, runs, he okay, his, I'm done. His, he runs to, like, his grandpa's house, who is actually young, because this is a weird timeline. Yeah. Who's wearing, like, the supernova suit, and it's weird. Yeah, well, that's... Um, 
Dude, I don't. I haven't read it in so long, but I know that the super, the guy in the supernova suit is his dad. Well, yeah. The okay, so his grandpa is wearing it. Yeah, this, Daniel this Carter. Time, yeah, and so um, he gave it to him. Rip, Rip comes and is like, "Booster, we gotta go save some timelines." Yeah, and so they disappear, and right as that happens, uh, a, a silhouette shows up and knocks out his grandpa and takes the supernova suit. And it turns out that that's uh, Booster's dad, which, you know, spoiler, but it's not a super important thing. Well, it's not even an, I mean, it's an old series. And not only that, yeah. it's it's not popular either, so. <laughs> well, this is true. And I mean, I guess, like, you know, so our reason for, for doing this, essentially, is because of um, the fact that Booster doesn't have a series right now. Yeah. And, um, like, it's been Cullen's favorite character for years, and, uh... I've just kind of always thought that he was hilarious, and I have never actually read any of it until now. But um, I found out that it's actually really, really good. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, you know, we're kind of we 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 were angry a little bit, if you could say that 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 there was no series. Um, but we have, I guess, sort of news about that. Oh yeah, we do. But you you but, have a story to tell, right? Well, I was gonna go into the speculation about rebirth. Right. Um, and uh -huh. how Seamus, Seamus is actually the one who proposed this, but I, I'm with it because I will do anything for Booster Gold. <laughs> I will literally die for Booster Gold. Um, and, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and let Seamus actually talk about that since he made it up, but just know I'm with it. <laughs> well, I mean, there's, I don't, I think I had a couple of different speculations that I brought to you, but so I must, I assume the one that we were thinking of was the one. Uh, well, because we, we know that Dr. Manhattan is currently behind the whole rebirth uh, schemes of, you know, whatever. DC yeah, with Comics the button right and now, everything. Right. Um, well, I guess our, our first speculation was that it would be really hilarious if it ended up um, that Booster came back and had to, uh, as like maybe Wave Rider or something, and had to, um, you know, go head to head with Dr. Manhattan. Uh, but I, I think it's kind of already been confirmed that that's going to be Superman. I just, that's so weird to me. Yeah, like me Superman. and, I, I, I think that, like, Superman doesn't stand a chance, to be honest. But I know that, I know how, it's obviously, first of all, it's comic. So, right. anything could happen. But also, it's not an idea of their physical strength or anything like that. It's it's uh, ideals and stuff like that. That's how the fight's basically working. Which, yeah. I mean, I get it. And so Superman's probably going to win. But it's still Wave Rider versus Doctor Manhattan. How cool would that be? <laughs> well, uh, well, I mean, you know, this is kind of, I, I guess, a, a little slightly off topic now. But the, I don't think that there's really going to be a win or lose when it comes to this thing. There's going to be a, a change of heart. Yeah, yeah. In in the case of Doctor Manhattan, who's going to realize that there is uh, hope for, I guess, humanity. Yeah. So I haven't read all of Rebirth, and I know we're way off topic now, but um, he's the one who took the 10 years from everybody, or whatever it was. Yeah, Dr. Manhattan okay. took 10 years somehow out of the, uh, out of, I don't know, the continuum the, yeah, of the, the DC universe. Yeah, he took 10 um, years from everyone. It was post-Flashpoint, basically when it got rebuilt, he took 10 years from everyone. Like, they just never happened. So relationships weren't formed and blah, blah, blah. Wally West is the only one who actually remembered it. Um, yeah, it, it seems super weird to me. It's almost... Because um, Flashpoint was before the New 52, right? Yeah. Flashpoint so is what led like, into the New 52. It's almost like they're just erasing everything that happened in the New 52. Which, I mean... But in not, support... Because... Yeah, but in support of Booster, he was only in the New 52 in Justice League International. So yeah, this is true. in supporting this is true. that, he, for all we know, he could be with Dr. Manhattan as Wave Rider. Maybe the New 52 was never supposed to happen. Because if you look in the New 52 comics, they all say, like, we're changing up the DC entirely, blah, 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 and all this new stuff. And it's like, they were like, well, they literally changed everything. But maybe that, maybe... Maybe it was at the time, you know, to boost comic sales and whatnot, but they always have a comic book explanation for what happened. Like, they wanted Superman to sell more, so in the Crisis on Infinite Earth, they killed every single Kryptonian except for Superman. And right, so, and I, well, I mean, they're, sort, they're doing the same thing with Rebirth, though. I mean, it's it's reinventing, basically, yeah. um, you know, the DC Universe, and 
I don't know. I mean, it, I think that they said something like, um, it'll change the past and the future of what he yeah. is, or basically whatever. Uh, but we know that Booster exists because Skeets is in the Rebirth comics. Well, yeah, and not only that, but like Booster has been depicted in the comics. Um, yeah. I, in in Green Lanterns, uh, I believe Volume Two. I actually don't really buy the single issues. I like to wait for the trades to come out. So um, anyway, in Volume Two, there's a part uh, where I don't even remember who it was, but they're basically explaining something about Guy Gardner and uh, talking about how he was in the JLI and it and there's actually a panel where it shows the JLI and Booster standing there. So Oh yeah, you I sent mean, me a picture of that. I don't you know, that kind of confirms his existence, I suppose. Like, well, I mean, I guess it it confirms that he ha that he exists in the continuity. It doesn't confirm that he's alive. Yeah, person. because within those 10 years though that it was gone, if those 10 years were the Justice League International continuity or whatever, then previous to that was when he was unable to tell people what he was doing. So if well, if that's yeah. the, if that's the point where they took him back to, you know, after taking away those ten years, then he could still be basically hiding, unable well, to show that, what he's but, doing. But I mean, it's so hard. It's so hard because you know, if 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 Booster Gold as a Wave Rider became time itself, then I mean, you can't get rid of him because he is time. So yeah, but only Wave Rider is. So what actually happened was I don't know if you've read Convergence Booster Gold. I know you have it with have you it. though, because no, I gave oh it no, to yeah, you. you gave it to me. Never mind. But he. So what happens in Convergence Booster Gold is that so Booster is outside of t uh, time, so he's not really affected by the the. He still has his powers because he's a technological superhero in the same way that uh, Blue Beetle had his powers because it's all from their suit. Because everyone who was under the domes, they lost their powers, uh, if it was, like, actual powers. But people like Hawkman, who didn't have powers, and um, Booster Gold, right. Blue Beetle, whoever, they still have their powers. So Booster is able, he's, like, just transporting through all the the domes, and he's seeing all these people or whatever. And eventually he transports into a dome that has the new 52 um, Booster, who never really did time travel. He is a time traveler. Uh, according to the canon, but he never did it because he only appeared in Justice League International. And I literally just finished reading all 12 issues of that last night, so I know he did not time travel even once. Um, but basically, the old uh, Booster Gold, he turns into Wave Rider. But the new 52 Booster Gold, who are technically the same Booster Gold as far as like the comics are concerned, but but the new 52 Booster Gold you know, hadn't turned into Wave Rider yet. Um they, so there's a Wave Rider and a Booster Gold at the same time, even though the Wave Rider that we have now, because Wave Rider was a hero before, and he was a different guy entirely, but um, you can tell that this one is Booster Gold, because he's actually just Wave Rider with Booster Gold's costume on. Uh, so they exist at the same time. And so, I don't know if they would, like, work together or anything like that, but it's just, I don't know. I want, I have, like, high hopes that they will put him in somewhere. Like, as Wave Rider or as Booster Gold or as both. I don't care. But I need it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, no, yeah. I, and, I mean, there, it's impossible that he wouldn't come back. He's going to come back in some way. And just the fact that right there that there was two of them in two different beings, I, yeah. I guess. I mean, there, it, Booster Gold himself, like, a, a, as a comic, just leaves so much room for speculation in any way. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, um, it's really weird because... We know that Daniel Carter was Supernova until Jonar, which is his Michael's dad, or Jonar, however you want to say it, stole the Supernova suit and became Supernova. But before that, in the 52 weeks, Booster himself was in Supernova. Um, when he fakes his death, he, he goes into the future, finds his own skeleton, and puts it in his suit to find out who was trying to kill him, basically. Or who, you know, and and so, and when he comes back, he puts the Supernova suit on. So he's actually Supernova for, like, a month or two there for multiple weeks. So it's like, you know, anybody could be anybody when it's, when Booster's behind it. Like, yeah. Booster could be everybody, even. Like, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't even matter. It's interesting. Well, uh, another thing that's worth pointing out is Ted Cord is alive in Rebirth. Yeah, which is, I mean, either, <clears throat> so in those ten years, he had to have died, right? Or or did it, or is this post him saving him? Like, I don't know. 
did that even happen? Like, yeah, or did he ever, never die? Like, I don't know. It's so actually, weird. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I haven't read the, you know, the new, the Rebirth Blue Beetle series, and I don't know if I want to, because it has bad reviews, and I just don't care about Jamie Ray's, uh, <laughs> you know, but Ted Kord's in it, so it's worth maybe reading just to find out why or how that is even possible. It's interesting, it's just that Ted uh, is like, Ted was looking for the for the um the scare app basically and so he just right, coaches well, Jaime and... if anyone if anyone doesn't know Ted Cord is B B Blue Beetle number 2 who is Booster Gold's best friend and it's the best thing ever it's awesome <laughs> it's hilarious you need like issues number 0 and then 8 9 10 11 I think and 1 million of Booster Gold's 2008 series are the best issues of anything ever um, but also there's a, there's one issue with the first Justice League International, the original one. So for the first few issues, it was just called the Justice League and then it became Justice League International. But it's so funny because there's a scene where Batman, they're all arguing and Batman's like, Batman says, shut up. And then in the background, you just see Ted like shushing everybody. <laughs> and it's so funny. But, um, also read Justice League, Convergence Justice League International, the very last panel of the very, of the second issue, which is the last one. Uh, Booster travels, or had at some point traveled to there and put in like confetti in his room and stuff and said happy birthday and it made me cry and it was really gay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 a good companionship, I guess. They they're they're called the super buddies at some point, so which is hilarious as well. Um, but I think. We kind of went off the track on speculation there, but we totally did yeah, at the same time. But it, yeah, we—I mean, it was all incorporated. Yeah, and but rebirth, basically, me and Seamus both agree, and I think anyone who knows what Booster does or is capable of even would agree that he very well could have a large role still, even though we know most of what's happening in rebirth, he could still have a very large role in it that we don't know about, and that's basically I mean, all we were saying. And I mean, you know, I had thought that maybe he just doesn't have, he's not in Rebirth because he would just be too powerful. He'd be too overpowered to even be a part of this because everything about Rebirth kind of just has to do with time right now. Yeah, well, that's, he would be really overpowered, especially if he was Wave Rider. Because <laughs> as Booster, he has a, he has right, a large so... idea of what time is, but he isn't, he doesn't have power over it. He has powers to go through it. And... Well, I mean, he has powers to change it, except for apparently things that are, uh, what are they, what are they, what does Rip Hunter call it? Something, he makes him go and try to save Barbara Gordon. Yeah. It's solidified in time, that's what he says, so it's an unchangeable act, basically, or an unchangeable, I don't know. <laughs> I don't yeah, know how to explain. no, I get it, he, so, I'm gonna just explain this, this is issue five, it's the killing joke issue for Booster Gold, he, um... Rip, so Booster's like trying to, you know, basically play God, and Rip's like, okay, well, I'm gonna let this retard do it, basically, and um, so he does, he says, hey, go save Barbara Gordon, because if anybody who hasn't read The Killing Joke, in The Killing Joke, uh, the Joker shoots um, Batman, no, shoots Barbara Gordon, <laughs> and she becomes handicapped, uh, and that's how she Oracle came around, Oracle. Yeah. yeah, and so... He tries, and he tries, and he tries, and he tries, and he actually almost dies. He gets the crap beat out of him by the Joker multiple times. He beats the crap out of the Joker, a bunch of stuff, and, um, yep, that's it. So he, and then he comes back, and he's like, he's like, Rip, please, it's not working. And Rip's like, yeah, it's never gonna work. Nice try, idiot. <laughs> and that's basically what happens, and that was just a way to get Booster to realize that he can't change everything. Or he, he technically can't change anything. He can help, but he can't... If it happened and he wasn't involved in it in the past, then it, he's never going to be involved in it. It's going to happen. Basically, Booster Gold is the reason that's, that every superhero exists. So he's the, for, for the most he, part, yeah. He is required, according to time, to go back and make sure... And that they sure do. That, yeah. That they become those people, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that's... And a lot of them are on accident. Like, for example, when he basically causes the Flash to exist. So everyone knows that Barry Allen became the Flash because lightning struck his building that he was in, and he poured chemicals on himself and became the Flash. Um, 
But what actually happened, according to the Booster Gold comics, was that he was fighting Supernova, who we didn't know who it was at the time, and he tore the lightning rod off the building, and he threw it into Supernova's chest. Well, that caused lightning to strike the building, which Barry Allen happened to be in, which happened to make him become the Flash. So he didn't even mean to, you know, he didn't know, he didn't know he was there for that, but he was. No, you, you haven't read it in a while, because what happened was they run in, they're, they're tra him and Rip Hunter are traveling through time, and then they run into Wally West and Barry Allen, yeah. who are traveling on the treadmill, and it breaks, and they break down, and so they land at a certain time period, which oh, yeah. just so happens, it just so happens to be when Barry I forgot that they were all there. ...become the Flash, yeah, so they start fighting, and then all of a sudden, um, Wally West and Barry Allen just disappear... And Rip's like, okay, something's wrong, and we need to fix it. And a Booster is just like they're fighting, and they're like across from this building. And he's and Booster's like, oh, I bet that that <laughs> he's like, I bet that uh, lightning rod's not supposed to be there. <laughs> and um, that's because uh, it had been placed there to try to prevent them from being ex from existing. And so of course Booster rips it off, and Cullen was right about the rest. Uh, yeah, the only issue I have with me right now is issue five. <laughs> and 21 and 1 million the rest of them are at home so um but yeah so i guess that's really it i was gonna get into the news now the reason that so i i basically you can go to dan Jurgen's website i don't remember what it's called but he has his email on there so you can email him and I, and so i was on the website and i was like i'm emailing him because i want to know what is happening with booster well, and, a couple, yeah, I think it was like a year ago, and you were like, I'm sad because there is no Booster Gold. So yeah. you emailed him about something, and he responded to you, and you've emailed him since then. Yeah, this this was on the 19th of May, 2017, and it is currently the 18th of June. And I'm not going to read my email because it's like 50 paragraphs long, and it's me crying about Booster Gold. And then <laughs> but he emailed me back, and he said, Cullen. I'm going to put a picture of this in right here, obviously, so y'all can see it. But he said, Cullen, you may have read that Booster has a movie deal in the works, currently under development, so we want to see what happens with that first. Dan. And so It's so short and so sweet. <laughs> yeah, I know, because I, I, we, we get these articles, you know, when they first announced that there might be a Booster Gold movie happening. And they're all like, yeah, we might get a Booster Gold movie. And everyone's like, what's a Booster Gold? And I'm just like, oh my god, my life is over. And then... And then it's been like two years or three years even since those articles came out, and there's no news. Type into Google news, and you'll get an article from like two months ago, and it's like, we still might get a movie. <laughs> and it's like, none of these are coming from sources that are relevant. These are all just movie websites, which obviously have the in in the industry, so they know. But it's like, I want it from someone who's involved in it. And so I just emailed Dan, and he told me. And it was like, oh my god. He confirmed well, I mean, it. He, he didn't. He, yeah, I mean, like he, there. It's in the works, basically, is what he. Well, he confirmed that they're actually doing it. There's a movie deal in the works because before that, there was no proof anywhere. It was completely unbased. They didn't provide evidence that they were actually in the uh, process of making a movie deal. Like they were, they just said it, and we all took them on their word. Which, like I said, they're in the industry, so you know they can. But you know, it was like. Now I know. They actually are. And it's not only yeah. that, but it's, it's three years in the works. So my guess is that Dan is pushing really hard for some stuff. And if it's coming from Dan, it's good. Right. I mean, well, he was the, Dan was the creator. I don't know if we said that. Oh, yeah. So Dan, Dan, he cre created, Dan created him. Booster, yeah. Created Booster Gold. In um, like 86 or something. First appearance, Booster Gold issue one. Good issue. He fights Black Guard. So, <laughs> so, yeah, that basically kind of ended our speculation because we were speculating and then Cullen emailed him um yeah so so I you know I was speculating like oh Booster Gold's gonna come back and he's gonna destroy Dr. Manhattan and then <laughs> well I guess that I, it was also kind of ended when when the button series ended by Joff Johns saying you know Superman doomsday clock is ticking or whatever yeah but but I mean that still doesn't mean that Booster Gold couldn't have a uh a part in it in yeah. some way or that or that later on when they're when they're making Booster Gold comics again, that Booster Gold actually has everything to do with it, and it's just not told in the actual yep. um, series. Because which is normally just, how they do it. It's normally how they do Booster Gold anyway. Yeah, um, and I we keep saying that there's no series right now. There is sort of one, but it's only had one issue. Well, that doesn't count. 
and it's Mr. Gold and the Flintstones. Which, so, when I heard about it, is actually a big deal because his most recent comic that came out prior to this was 2011. And yeah. so the fact that he has a series that came out in 2017, that's a big deal because that means the character is still being used for something, although even though it's a meme. So yeah, it was Booster Gold and the Flintstones. <laughs> he goes well, back in it's... time. They talk about erections, stuff like that. <laughs> and it's weird. But it was not, it wasn't, don't get me wrong, it was bad. I Or it wasn't bad, I mean. It was good. I encourage it's you to pick it up. at least. Yeah, yeah. I encourage you to pick it up. But Booster, the way that, when people who aren't Dan... Dan have control of the writing over Booster. They play, they they make him almost as the original character that Booster was. They make him douchey, and he's not yeah. anymore. But they do it still, and it's like Dan. I mean, I mean, and Dan obviously they have the right to do it, and if DC approves, then it's it's canon. But he, like I don't get it. It's just like he's not this douchey guy anymore. He does it like because I mean, in Justice League three thousand. He's in Justice League 2000. Him and Ted Cord are found in cryogenic sleep on Earth, and they he all their like he talks about his porn collection and stuff. And it's like, when has Booster ever been known as a guy who has a porn collection? It's like <laughs> he he what well, hasn't? So whoever is writing this, which is uh, J M De Matisse, I think, it's like. I thank you for putting Booster in a comic. First of all, I really like it. It's actually really good still. But stop, because that's not Booster. <laughs> well, I mean, the way I've always imagined him is like DC's Deadpool, sort of like you know. He like is a lot like character. that. He he doesn't break the fourth wall, but he's definitely a lot like Deadpool. Where he, he yeah, I don't think there's any other characters that break the fourth. I wall. I hope not. I don't like it, but <laughs> <laughs> it's I don't know. But I'm just gonna. We're we're coming towards the end of the show here, this first yeah. issue. Issue? <laughs> issue. That's what we should call it. <laughs> uh, we're coming to the one. end of this first first episode or issue. We'll decide after. Um, and um, so I'm just gonna give you some funny anecdotes, basically. I only have one, but um, I was at work and I found out one of my coworkers likes comics and stuff. He was actually talking about The Watchmen, and so that got us talking about Rebirth and blah 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 which got me talking about booster obviously and i was like and he was like wait who's booster and i was like he's like a time traveler and he was like he was like oh is he that guy who like stages stuff to become popular yeah that guy's a douchebag <laughs> and i was like stop you don't know anything don't do this and i was trying to explain it to him but i just couldn't and i, I was like i just kept saying stop over and over again he wasn't wrong he wasn't he wrong because he was a douchebag like but he also, like, any time he said, in the first issue, the very first issue of his his first appearance, I just read it the other day, um, he was like, he's, he referred to something as boosterific. Anytime he thinks something is cool, he says it's boosterific. Like, that dude is so full of himself. <laughs> like, prior to, like, 2000, that dude cared about nothing but himself. Uh, uh, well... That's great. I guess um, I would like to conclude that even after, you know, the speculation and everything, that when Booster Gold comes back, there is, without a doubt, no way that he could not be involved in Rebirth, mm -hmm. just after thinking about all this, so he's there somewhere. Yeah, I think that they could still be, like, behind the scenes putting him, or, you know, trying to be like, he could be involved in this way or whatever, and um, I think that, according to Dan's email, they're basically just waiting. For yeah, that. I'm sure Dan Jurgens already has plenty of ideas. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I guarantee it. Like he, yeah. I saw, I went on his Twitter the other day, and it was like, of all the characters that you write the majority for, so he writes a lot of Superman, he writes a lot of um, Batman Beyond, and he writes Booster, obviously. And they were like, of those three characters, which are you the proudest of? And he always says Booster. Anytime someone asks him a question revolving around anything, he always his answer is Booster, always. So he has a lot of love for the character as well. So I think no matter what, he's not going to let it die as f as yeah. long as he can, which is good. I mean, I hope if, if DC's like, okay, this character's not profitable enough, he, he's gone, I hope Dan still does something for him. Like, I hope he obtains the rights and we can get it some, you know, through his own publisher or whatever. But that's going to end this first uh, episode issue of uh, Booster's Comic Spotlight. Um, thank you all for watching. Uh, we will be back at some point with uh, episode two. And we haven't discussed what that one's going to be about, so I don't know. But we will see you then.
Peace out.